Joe Taylor uh, DSP mode. And, um, you know, so, so the bottom line is that it just wasn't designed for that. And I don't want to make it sound like I'm dumping a Mellicraft. I love Mellicraft. They make excellent equipment. Anything they make is first rate. But the problem is that the KX3 is a 10-year-old design at this point. And it just wasn't really designed for the kinds of things that I wanted to do. Now, these are the cabling requirements if you want to run digital with the KX3. You need a USB sound card. You need a cable going from the headphone jack to the USB sound card. You need a powered speaker because you're taking the audio from the speaker and putting that into the USB sound card. So then you also have to carry an audio splitter between the headphone cable and the speaker. You then need a cable from the mic jack to the USB sound card. There's two cables that go from the PX3 pan adapter to the KX3. You need power cables for both of those. Um, then you need a USB cable from the sound card to the computer. And then you need an Elecraft USB rate control cable. This is a lot of stuff to carry. It's easy to hook things up wrong. I've wasted time, where's my audio, where's my audio? And you forget to plug something in or you, or you plug something in backwards. And it just takes a lot of the fun out of operating digital modes with the KX3. Then there's the frequency stability. Like I said, it came out before the JT modes and you can be running FT8, for example, and you can see the frequency drift in the waterfall. You can see the frequency shifting after you start transmitting a lot. Now, in 2012, Allocraft did announce a calibration procedure to improve stability. But it's a bit of a pain. It takes 30 minutes. You need a precise 50 megahertz sig uh, signal generator. You need a heat gun and you need a refrigerator. You basically put the rig in the refrigerator for a certain amount of time. You take it out, you heat it, and you run the calibration procedure feeding in this precise 50 megahertz uh, signal. And that's just a royal pain. So these are well-known issues with the KX3, an otherwise delightful little radio. These are the cabling requirements for the IC705. You just need a micro USB cable and a power cable. And that's it. Everything pretty much goes through the micro USB cable. I find that even though the IC705 is bigger than the KX3, there's more spare room in my QRP bag. That's because I don't need the external speaker and I don't need the PX3 because the pan adapter is built right into the uh, IC705. Now you still have to carry some cables. I like operating CW digitally. And so I take along a little uh, uh, wind here. Uh, there's actually a WinK Mini that's really, really small. You need some cables for that. Um, one gripe you hear about the IC705 is that it doesn't have a built-in antenna tuner. But if you use resonant antennas, like I try to, that's not an issue. And at some point, I might buy a small antenna uh, tuner. But right now, I have an old LDG uh, Z11, which works good enough. Uh, that was one of Elecraft's first, uh, not Elecraft, one of LDG's first antenna tuners. Um, one antenna tuner I am considering very highly is the Elecraft T1. It runs off a nine volt battery. It's, yeah, he's saying it's the size of a pack of cigarettes because they don't want to encourage smoking, but it's about that size, very lightweight and small, $179. So I might get one of those at one point, the Elecraft uh, T1. Okay, let's talk about the price comparison. When people talk about the IC705, they say, dear God, that thing costs $1,300. But if you look at the KX3, Elecraft sells it remotely. I mean, not remotely, they sell it a la carte. It starts at the price that I mentioned there. If you want a roofing filter, you got to add it. You want an internal battery charger, add that. The PX3 is not cheap. You want to run two meters. Add that. They don't even give it to you with a hand mic. 
So you guys can do the math. You, you can end up spending a lot of money on a KX3 very, very quickly. Uh, so compared to that, the IC705 is actually a bargain. Okay. This is what a picture of my KX3 setup looked like at field day. Look at all the cables. My God, look at that. That is a mess. And if you guys were at Mercer County Amateur Radio Club's field day, and I had that, you saw the same thing. Um, you know, just, you got to take the cables out of your bag, hook it all up, check it all out. And then you got to put it all, when you're done, you spend so much of your time wrangling cables or you misplace a cable or you don't hook one up right. It's no fun. This is what it looks like with the IC705. The only cables you see back there are the USB cable going to the computer and another USB cable going to the uh, K1 uh, wind care, K1 EL wind care. Much, much simpler setup, much simpler. It takes you know, just a few minutes to get everything set up and you're on the air. Okay, here are my first impressions of the IC705. It's just like a mini IC7300, but it's got more features. It's like this, they took the 7300, shrunk it to a fraction of the size and added more to it. I don't know how ICOM did it, but, but they did. It's so, and, and the user interface is identical. The waterfall is the same. It's just like a 7300. If you have a 7300, you will be at home with the IC705. I operate mostly digital modes and CW. It's a great CW radio, uh, really good filtering, noise reduction. The waterfall is fabulous. Great, great CW radio. Works well with my digital modes. Works extremely well with FL rig, FL digi. Uh, no sign of frequency drift at all with FT8. It's just rock solid. The snap-on battery packs are an excellent idea. Yeah, the KX3 allows you to have internal AA cells, but if you ever need to change them for whatever reason, you have to literally pop the radio open. And then there's always the danger that when you put back together, some cable might get caught or some connector may pop out. Uh, and then I never really did like Ellicraft's uh, battery charger. A, a good battery charger won't let you overcharge your batteries. Ellicraft's battery charger was time-based. You'd set it to charge like four, eight, or 12 hours. And I never fried a set of batteries, but I can't imagine that somebody did. not I don't think that's a good way of charging batteries just based upon a timer. Um, what else about the IC705? Not only does it have D-Star over the air, you can also, through the internet, there's, there's Wi-Fi built into it. You can connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot and connect to D-Star gateways that way. Now, it's not quite like having one of these DV doggles, which, which I've used that for a while, but it's not quite like one of those. And pardon me for a second. That is iced tea, by the way. Um, you know, it's, but, so you can't like get into a, um, you know, a, a D-Star uh, chat room directly, but you can allegedly get into, uh, get into uh, D-Star repeaters through their gateway if they can't get connected to the internet. I tried this a few times, but unfortunately I haven't been able to catch it when people are listening, but it looks like it works. Like I said, the UI is just like the 7300. The Ellicraft QRP radio is lighter, but the 705 isn't all that heavy. It is indeed bigger, but it's not that much heavier, in my opinion. It seems reasonably weather sealed. I'm not saying it meets some mill standard where you want to take it out in a deluge, but I think it's at least as well weather sealed as the KX3. One common complaint about the KX3 was the speaker. It had a real little tinny speaker that would rattle a lot if you turned up the volume too high. Uh, Ellicraft's response to that was, well, it's not really designed to be used as with the speaker. It's supposed to be used with headphones. Uh, okay. The IC705 has a front facing speaker that really sounds good. Um, excellent sonic speaker. So, you, so there's the speaker is much, much better. Okay. 
No problem with 100% duty cycle digital modes. It doesn't overheat. Uh, there's a temperature uh, gauge right on the front. It doesn't get uncomfortably warm. You know, you can run 10 watts all day as near as I can tell. There's a voltmeter on the front. That's very useful if you're running off, a, uh, off an external battery. Very, very useful for that. <clears throat> like I said, the CW reception is just like the 7300. I don't operate a lot of sideband, but I did some last weekend. There was a contest on, and I actually made some DX contacts on 20 meters. I work somebody in France. I work K3LR. Uh, earlier in the week, I made a few uh, 20 meter sideband contacts, and yeah, side, it has excellent audio quality, has a good speech compressor, and the microphone seems to work very, very well. Uh, it has built in two meters and 440. That's great if you travel. Um, if you're traveling, this might be the only radio you need to bring with you because you can hit local repeaters. And that's just a wonderful thing to have in, with, with, with one radio. And once again, with the external battery pack, you just turn it on and it's like having a fairly largest HT with you. Uh, oh, and that's Bluetooth. Um, I've got a really good set of Bose uh, noise reducing headphones. I listen to my, on my MacBook Pro and my iPhone all the time with them. I can also use that for uh, listening to the, uh, to the IC705. It's one less cable you need. And you also get the benefits of the noise reduction. You don't get tangled up in cables. You know, here I am operating my backyard in Hermitage. And last week, the apartment complex next to me was doing some tree removal with chainsaws. And then right in the middle of all this, the guys who cut my lawn showed up. So I just turned, you know, plugged in, you know, turned on the headphones and they all went away. Um, and I find that with a three ampere hour lithium ion phosphate battery, you doing a lot of digital work. Uh, the three ampere battery will last all afternoon. So these are my first impressions of it. ICOM, sit down now, is giving away an accessory. They are giving away free programming software. So rather than program up your, your local repeaters through the GUI, um, you can use this programming software. You can back it up. If you have two radios, you can clone them. Um, I'd love to see them do this with the IC7300 uh, also. But this is a wonderful thing for, uh, for programming things. So much easier. Okay, now, these consider these annoyances and nitpicking. It's a great radio. I typically don't do eHAM reviews. If I did, I would give it five stars in a minute. But there's no perfect radio, and there are some things that, that annoy me. There's no USB cable with it. Uh, come on, how much would it cost to include a USB cable with it? When I'm trying to talk to a D-Star gateway, it looks like the radio is transmitting. Now, if I'm trying to connect to a D-Star repeater through the internet, why would it have to transmit? I, I don't get that. It doesn't seem like it would have to. Now, I have hooked up a watt meter, but I look at the meters on the front and they all indicate that RF is going out. So I don't see why this would be necessary. It seems to me like it's a bug in the software. Uh, before, the, before you try connecting to D-Star gateways, you need to download a list of D-Star systems from ICOM and copy them through a, to a micro SD card. Why can't you just download it directly from the internet? I mean, you do that, we do that with, with phones these days. We do this with law devices. Uh, and likewise, as long as we're talking about downloading things, software updates, why, why should you have to download updates to a micro SD card and then, and then copy it on the SD card. Why not just do it directly to the radio? Um, there's a rumor floating on the internet that ICOM is coming out with a matching antenna tuner. That's great, but the rumors I'm seeing on the internet say that it will only match random wires and not coax. I don't see where there's a big market for this. Uh, PAMs want to be able to match coaxial antennas. So I don't think this is necessarily a good idea. Okay, little ergonomic things. 
Um, there's like a little bevel on the back. The radio wants to tilt up, but keeps tipping over, which means that it sits flat. And it's just very annoying dealing with the radio that's sitting flat on our table. You want a radio that tilts up a little bit. You know, the KX3 has feet. Um, I'm trying to, yeah, my uh, IC7300 has a bail on it. Somebody sold an accessory for the uh, Yesu FT817 called the peg leg, which were little legs for that. So I wish ICOM had little feet on the front of the, of the 705. Like I said, these are nitpicking things. In my mind, these are not reasons not to buy the radio, but I just want to mention them. Um, this has mechanical transmit relays just like the IC7300 does. It's not as noisy, it just must run in the family. But you do hear some clicking when, when you do uh, CW. Um, I have a ton of 2.1 millimeter power connectors, ton of them. That's what Elecraft uses, all kinds of other device uses them. ICOM decided to go with 2.5 millimeter. I'm sure there's good engineering reason for it, but I really wish that they um, had gone with, with the 2.1 millimeter because that just seems to be more popular. They have remote control and picture apps for the um, 705, but they won't run on Android. None for, none for, none for those in an Apple environment. I find that annoying. Uh, okay. Uh, like I said, one of the problems with the 705 is it just keeps wanting to tip over. It wants to sit flat. Now there's some solutions for that. Somebody is selling a $55 piece of heavy piece of, of a plate metal with a camera tripod on it. And yeah, that'll work, but it's 55 bucks. And if you travel somewhere, who wants to take that along? Um, so I'm a photographer, I went poking around and for 10 bucks, I found this photo tripod. It has a ball head. It, the, the uh, radio, as you see in the picture, sits almost flat. It folds up very, very nicely. And I can stick it into a loop on the outside of my QRP bag. I, being I'm a photographer, I have a large number of camera bags. So when I'm done with this little mini tripod, which is made out of, um, I'm not gonna say it's carbon fiber, but some kind of a decent quality of, of plastic. Legs fold up and they just fit perfectly into the little loop. Um, this is 10 bucks. It's available from B&H and from Amazon. Uh, really any camera tripod will work. This is a wonderful idea from ICOM, putting a uh, standard sized uh, ball head uh, screw in the bottom. And you could, of course, spend more than $10 on a camera tripod. The more expensive ones will fit perfectly flat. But I figured, what the heck, this is lightweight. It's easy to take with me, and it fits the purpose. So this is the one that I'm using by Ulanzi. I have no idea who they are. I think it came from China. But both B&H and Amazon sell it. You can customize the signal display to make weak signals easier to see. Um, Hey, Tim, I can make this presentation available after, you know, to Mercer County after this. If you follow that YouTube link, uh, you'll see a really, really nice video on how to adjust and tinker with the waterfall display on, on not just the uh, 705, but also the 7300 and the 7610. And I like this better, but you know, to, to each his own. There's, you know, it's, 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 it's a personal preference kind of a thing. Uh, what I particularly like about this fellow setup is that it makes it easier to see weaker signals or to easier to judge the, uh, the signal strength. Okay, power consumption. Um, when the 705 was announced, people were very concerned about the power consumption. Uh, Oh my goodness, this thing with this fancy pen adapter. Oh, you're gonna need a big car lead acid battery for it. Well, I went and measured it. And I put pictures of the little three amp hour bioino battery and my inline ammeter so that you guys can see that I'm not making this up because these never seem almost too good to be true. When you're receiving 20 meter sideband, 
with the pan adapter going and in full bloom, it draws 250 milliamps. The KX3 typically draws around 200 milliamps. Now you can reduce that by turning off the backlight and doing some other things, but you know, you're not gonna really save that much. So this draws 240 milliampers, which I think is, is pretty good. When I transmit at 10 watts, it's 2230, uh, 2230 uh, milliamper hours. You know, not the most efficient transmitter, you know, if I'm getting 10 watts out, I'm having to put in 28 watts, but hey, that's still comparable to what the uh, Elecraft is doing, uh, would, 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 would draw. So my opinion is that if you're concerned about power consumption, buy a bigger battery. You know, these bioeno lithium ion phosphate batteries, you know, if, if you can afford a $1,300 radio, you can, you can afford a three ampere hour uh, battery from bioeno. Uh, and with all the room you're saving the camera bag, I carry the three ampere hour and the six ampere hour. That should easily get me through all, a, a long day of operating. So, so the power consumption is, in my opinion, very reasonable. Okay, satellites. This, these are some members of Panther Amateur Radio Club a couple of weekends ago in Pittsburgh. Note that I have the 705 up on a camera tripod at eye level. Once again, it's great that you can do that. We are trying to work satellites through this. This would make half of a really good satellite station being it does 440. And then with the pan adapter, you can see the signal coming into your band pass and, and track it. So we're gonna try this again. Um, we're gonna use the 705 to receive. And then we've got a, uh, one of our club members has an FT817. We can use that well, to transmit or vice versa. Either way, we will, we're gonna have full duplex for, for satellites, but you can use the 705 for, for portable satellite work fairly easily. It's, it's, you know, once again, people are saying, why do I need 440 on the QRP radio? Well. This is one reason why you do. You also note that I don't have any uh, battery hooked up to it. I'm using the uh, clip-on battery in the back just to make things more convenient. And by the way, with the clip-on battery in the back, you only get five watts, but it's, it's worth it for the convenience. Okay, and yeah, it works. Uh, this is a screenshot and a picture of me in my place in Hermitage working South Africa on FT8 with 10 watts. Uh, I love these PAR NFED antennas. They're now being sold by uh, Fibroflex. Fibroflex bought them. And these are just great QRP antennas. The resonant quality materials, they work extremely well. I'm fortunate here at my place in Hermitage to have a lot of tall trees. So I have one of these uh, 20 meter NFED antennas hanging from a walnut tree. Uh, it, it's, it's like a 31 foot vertical. And I plug it in the bottom and puts out a tremendous signal. So here I am working South Africa. Uh, my idea of a good time is to come up here to Hermitage and sit on my deck, uh, look at the deer and the birds. And yes, I've had deer come up to me, by the way. I was offering Olivia once and I, the deer seemed entranced by the warble of, of, of the Olivia signal. Uh, I don't know if it sounded like a meeting call for a deer or, or whatever, but it's, it's, it seemed to like it. Uh, so yeah, it, it absolutely works. Okay, so these, these are my final thoughts. Um, you know, to me, the gold standard in evaluating a radio is Rob Sherwood's report. So I'll be keeping an ear out to see what he has to say about it. I would be surprised if it doesn't rate fairly close to an IC7300, which is pretty good. You know, it's not at the top, but as Rob keeps saying, um, the radios these days are so good that, you know, little differences in position in this list just really don't matter that much. You can buy any of the top 20, 30 radios on his list and you will be a very happy camper. Um, one radio, a lot of people are buying are the, no, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, Zigu. Somebody can pronounce, uh, correct me later. Um, it's get some bad reviews on EHAM, but also get some great reviews. I hear a lot of them on the air. They're going for around 500 bucks and they have a built-in antenna tuner. Um, I'd love to see a comparison with that, with the quality of the receiver and that. Um, 
you know, but but I, I hear a lot of that. That seems to be a competitor in, in the ICOM space. And let me just say, I've only had mine for less than a month. I've just scratched the surface. The advanced manual for this, boy, there's two manuals. There's the basic manual, and then there's the advanced manual. The advanced manual is 218 pages long, 18 chapters. This thing has Wi-Fi, it has GPS. I have just scratched the surface as to what you can do with this thing. Uh, so much capability. Now, one big activity for hams these days are summits of the air, and another one is parks on the air. You hear a lot of people on weekends doing that. I plan on getting active in, in those two with the, with the uh, IC705. Um, if you just want to do sideband or CW, the Elecraft radios still make some sense, particularly the KX2. The KX2 is smaller and lighter. It's less expensive. So if you're just doing CW or sideband, uh, you know, take a look at the KX2. And we also talked about the power. This is not an issue. Now, this is my opinion. My opinion is that, you know, you do soda or poda, you know, maybe once a month or so often, who does it every day? In my opinion, and this is just me, the IC705 is a better rig for daily use. It's got a better user interface. It has more features. And you could even use it as a base radio. I'm sure somebody's coming out with an amp for 100 watt amp for it. Uh, you know, you could use it as, as your base radio. So with that, that's my presentation. Uh, Tim, I've turned off the screen sharing. Uh, are anybody have any questions or anything they want to talk about? I have a radio here in the shack. Unfortunately, my MacBook Pro doesn't do back fade to have a back camera. So I'd have to switch to my iPhone if you guys want to see it actually in action. Are there any questions, concerns, any things you guys want to talk about the radio? Yo. Got a question there about uh, comparisons to the seven, the eight eighteen. Okay, uh, I have an FT eight seventeen, which is similar. Uh, the eight eighteen is still an old school uh, super hat receiver, so it's old technology. Uh, the problem I have with my FT eight seventeen is that the user interface is abysmal. It's all these little buttons. You have to keep looking in the manuals to see how to do things. Uh, yeah, you can put a Collins mechanical filter in, but I don't know if they make those anymore. So it's an okay radio. I, I, I still have my FD817. I'm not going to sell it because you can use it for satellites. Um, but that's my concern. Old design, terrible user interface. That's my opinion. What, 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 what do they go for these days for cost? Anybody know? Okay, that's my opinion on, on, on the Asia QRP radios. I think they missed the boat. Any, uh, any other questions for Harry? Yeah, Harry, one, one comment. Uh, you mentioned the, the lack of a tuner, right? I got this little uh, MTech ZM2 kit and it works great. I think it goes for about 70 bucks. And that's is, what is I've that been Is that a manual tuner? Is, is that a manual tuner? Yeah, right. If you could do me a favor and put that in the chat room, because uh, that's something I may want to look at. Okay, we'll do. What, what, yeah, put put that in the chat room, and I'd like to take a look at it. I've used, yeah, which tuners? Yeah, that's what I want to get. Who that is? NM3, I should know your that's name. I apologize. Uh, name's Dan. Um, that's Dan. the team one from Alacraft. Nice tuner. Yeah, I one of those is definitely in my future. I've seen them in use. It's a great tuner. Uh, my Z11 works, but it's kind of big. <laughs> it's 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 kind of big, but yeah, the I can see a T1 in, in my future. Uh, great, great tuner. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, one other thing here. You mentioned, uh, you know, that it, it wants to sit down flat. What I've done is I just took a little piece of yeah uh, one by three and put it under the front edge, and it works great. 
Well, but 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 I'm a software guy. You know, I'd get a splinter, I'd injure myself, I'd poke an eye out, I'd lop off a digit, I'd accidentally drop one on the cat. You know, I I don't do well with tools. I I've, I've used like yeah, I've done other, I've prop I've done other things to prop it up, but I just consider that on an otherwise delightful radio a bit of a faux pas. Not that I'm starting starting to talk French now, but I that that's like. Icon, what were you thinking? You did everything else per all was perfect on it. But the thing tips keeps tipping over. Uh, hey Tim, it's it's your meeting. I could go over to my phone and show the radio in use, or if you could think of another use for your time, it's your call. Hang on a second here. Let's see if we have any more questions first. Okay. Any other questions for Harry? Harry. Uh yeah. It's more of a comment than a question. But sure, Jack. Chris, come out, uh, what was it, WU3U, he showed us, you know, he put together a 100 watt, that ATU 100. And it, it's a great tuner, but for the 705, the 705 folds current, folds power back so quickly that you can't tune with it. And which, 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 which tuner is this? He, it's called the ATU 100. He, uh, I can't say I've heard of that. Okay. Okay. It's something that was on eBay and stuff. Great little tuner. I bought one, put it together. You know, it took all of about two hours to build it. Okay. It great. I use this. What is that? That's an LDG. Yeah. Yeah. Player. That, that, that'll work too. Yeah. Yeah. I, my, I, I have one of those two somewhere. LDG makes great tuners. Yeah. The and reason, the reason yeah, I bought it was it doesn't draw any power. Yeah. Just, just my ZL. I'm, I bought my Z11 from the same estate that I bought my FT817 from. Mm -hmm. And what you have is, is, is the successor. Yeah, what he's talking about is that um, a lot of the uh, LDG antenna tuners have latching relays. Right. So once you tune, that's no longer drawing power. And mine does the same thing. Yeah, it goes uh, down to like 40 microamps of power, so it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. So that that would be good too. How, now, how big how big is that? I wish you got, I wish you guys could like get this together with the T1. How big is it compared to the T1? It's that that's a that's like a full size tuner though, right? Well, give me a second. Here. Okay, I didn't, I don't want you to have to disassemble your station. No, no. This is it's seven and three quarter inches deep, five inches wide, and an inch and a half tall. Okay, that's a lot bigger than, than the Elecraft. Yeah. Oh, it is. That, that's exactly. about that that that's that's about the size of my Z11. Yeah. Which which is a fairly old tuner. Yeah. But one yeah, that, Go ahead. Yeah. If if I were LDG, I'd have my pants on fire right now trying to come up with a matching tuner for the 705 because there's you know there's already one company, Tim, I forget who makes that the one. Uh, um, somebody already makes one. Especially for the, uh, the the Viroplex people sell it. Made in China. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, and if if I was LDG, I'd have my pants on fire right now, racing to come up with a companion tuner for the 705 because that's going to be a huge market. Yeah, it is. They already have it on their website, but it's not out yet. Oh, they do. I keep it's, looking on the website. Hard. I haven't seen it yet. It, it, there, there's a there's a thing there for the tuner coming. Okay, they must have just put that up. Good, good, because that would be a huge seller for them. Uh, just like the 7300, the 705 does have a tune button on the front, and it is a little bit more convenient than having to put out a carrier and push a button on the tuner or put your, you know, I don't like tuners in automatic mode because my concern is right in the middle of contact, it'll start rattle, 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 rattle. Um, I prefer to tune up first and then turn the tuner off and transmit. So having that tune button in the front would be wonderful to, wonderful to have, in my opinion. Hey, thanks, guys. Any other questions for Harry? Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Okay, for, you're welcome. That was very interesting. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Hey, Tim, do we have time for me to switch over to my phone and do a demo, or is it getting a little tight? It's your call. No, no, uh, we've got uh, 15 minutes, so go ahead and switch over to your phone. And okay, guys, I'm going to yeah, go leave the meeting, and then I'll come back. All right.
We'll wait for you here, or, Harry. Or actually, 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 let me do this. Let me just let me just mute the camera and mute my audio. And so I want to welcome everybody to the Mercer County Amateur Radio Club. We're glad to have uh, so many faces here. There are members and guests. And uh, <clears throat> I wonder, uh, it looks like uh, some Pittsburgh clubs, maybe uh, some from the Meadville Club. Um, looks like uh, some from over in Ohio. So we're really glad to have everybody here this evening. And of course, after the short business meeting, uh, hello to you, Juan. Uh, Good evening. Hey, Zero Bravo down, down at the University of Pittsburgh. Nice to see you. And um, uh, after the uh, short business meeting, and uh, believe me, uh, it goes by quick, uh, we will have our Atlantic Division Director, W3TOM. And uh, Harry's back on. And yeah, uh, there we go, Harry. Okay, first, let me get the camera here turned around. There we go. Let me get the camera. There we go. First, this is this is my fellow cooperator here. His his name is Buck. Uh, I, I gotta tell you how I bagged this, Kim. You may know this. Just down the street from uh, Summit Racing, there's this really god awful massive antique mall. So the deal is, I'd go there with my wife, leave her there, and then go off to DX Engineering, and then come back. And I saw this deer head. And my house in Hermitage is an old Amish farmhouse. And it's the law in Pennsylvania that if you have an old Amish farmhouse, you're thereby required to have a deer head in it. So this was cheaper than buying a gun and ammunition and a hunting license. And I didn't have to sit up in a tree stand all day long in the rain. So this is, this is Buck. So, okay. So let me now show you the... Now, how do I switch cameras here so this is bigger? Uh, okay, they have to improvise overcome. Okay, so here's the 705. And here with Jean-Luc on top is the Z11. The Z11 is right here. This is the uh, tuner I normally use for my station here, which is the 200. This is the Z11. So this is the... 705, I have it on 40CW right now. You can see it's got a beautiful display. Now there's some cool things about the display. You can have the display move as you tune or you can center, what I've learned, you can center it and you see that green dial moving across the top. And that's how you can go ahead and tune it that way too. You can monitor, you can tell it how wide of a band you want to look at. Okay, now right now, as you can see, I have it on top of my 7300, so you can see the comparison in size. And you can see that, let me move this, let me, so the display, you can see that the display is actually almost as big as the 7300's display. So there's actually a lot of activity on tonight at on 40 meters. And it works great, it has all the filtering. Uh, let's just go back to here. For those of you guys in the sideband, let me go to. Uh... Oh, let me now go to the band stacking frequency, which I'm learning all about. And you can see how I have the. Uh... Oh, there's a nice strong signal. Yeah, he went away. Well, you guys get the idea. It's just like the 7300. No, oh, where's, where's the signal when I need one? Uh, but, but you guys get the idea here. Can you switch to 75 meters, Harry? Um, yeah, I can do that. Why, you want to try to work me? Well, I got 3858.5. Okay, give me one second here.
Uh, shows you how much I'll operate uh, 75. What frequency did you say? 3858.5. Okay, give me one second. I need to go to Ritty here. I've never used this antenna tuner. So give me one second. Hey, I got a match. <laughs> you sound surprised. Well, I've never used this tuner on this antenna before. Okay. Frequency in use, this is W3YJ. Hey, what's that call again? Oh, I think you gave me a busy frequency. Oh, that's the Skyview net, just check into it. Oh. That's AG3I, he's net control. Whiskey 3 Yankee Juliet, Whiskey 3 Yankee Juliet uh, QRP. Whiskey 3 Yankee Juliet, Whiskey 3 Yankee Juliet. Whiskey three, Yankee Juliet, Whiskey three, Yankee Juliet. Uh, whiskey three, Yankee Juliet. Uh, good evening. Uh, to help me if I don't have that call right, is that right? Whiskey three, Yankee Juliet? Correct. Uh, I'm doing a live demo of an IC705 for Mercer County Amateur Radio Club, all of 10 watts. Okay. I'm watching you on the uh, out of my left eye here. Um, <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, any other uh, check-ins here real quick, and uh, then we'll uh, turn it over. Okay, well, first. thanks. Thanks. I'll turn down the volume. Thanks. So, so you can see the thing works. Yeah, I heard you down here in Prosperity also, Harry. <laughs> the uh, the antenna is a 135-foot dipole. Here, let me get this switched around now. Uh, yeah, so you guys can see me now instead of instead of the radio. Yeah, that's, that's a 135-foot dipole fed with uh, Twinley up about maybe 30 feet. It's, between, it's held up by a walnut tree and a pine tree. I think the dielectric of the wood and the walnut tree is a big help. But uh, as you can see, it's, 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 it's a dandy little radio. Any, anything, okay, now I also have it, as you know, I'm a good big digital guy, but we're running out of time here. But I, as you know, I do a lot of digital stuff with it, uh, FL Digi, FT8 runs great on it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great digital radio too. Uh, if you're into Aries, you could take this to a deployment because it's got two meters and 440. You know, if, if you're trying to put data through a, uh, through a repeater. So it's just a really good all around little radio. Anybody else have any comments, questions, concerns, issues? Any, any other concerns? So any, like other, so we're, any other questions ahead. for Harry while we got him here? Okay, I'm gonna hang up on the phone and go back to my computer. If I can figure out how to do that. Well, there's this way. Okay, there we are, I'm back on my phone, so. Okay, guys, have any other questions, issues? concerns. The, the main takeaway I want to take of this is that I'm not dumping on Ellacraft. I love Ellacraft. Any Ellacraft product I have ever bought or used has been first rate. They have great engineering. Uh, the problem is they're not a very big company. They can basically work on one product at a time. And I get the sense, I don't you know, I don't have any inside information, but I get the sense right now that all their resources are tied up with the K4. 
Um, they had pandemic problems. They're in a part of California where I know they had fires. So I really feel for them. And I, and I know they would love to probably love to put out a KX4, but they just don't have the resources. So I want to make it very clear, I'm not dumping a Malacraft, okay? Um, they're, they're, they're a company run by hams, U.S. company, they make great stuff, but the KX3 is a 10-year-old radio at this point. Okay, uh, Harry, uh, thanks very much. That was a, a tremendous presentation. So thanks very much for putting that together.